Finally, my portal to the nether is complete. Right, let's go through. I hope what I see on the other side isn't, isn't too much for me. Well, this isn't how I imagined it. Where's the, wait, what's that noise? No, it can't be. Oh my God! Oh! So it's Halloween again, and you know what that means. We dug up the garden for almost no reason. Minecraft is a game about displacing blocks and investing hours into creating fine works of art with all the shelf life of a pile of raw chickens. You'll spend entire weekends collecting diamonds which are about as rare as a cat that is mildly fond of you, only to look up just in time to see your untimely death streaming towards you. You won't be needing these. Or you'll have enough gold to cover the Great Pyramids in triplica, only to inevitably misstep slightly and meet the same fate as the people of Pompeii. Because it seems that lava in this game has an unmistakable gravitational pull. Why review this on Halloween then? Well, at its core, Minecraft is a pretty terrifying game. I mean, look at it! A world made up entirely of cubes with faces. Please kill me. I will admit there are some cuboids scattered about, but they could have easily have made the whole game with only cubes. I guess they were just trying to... <clears throat> Step it up a notch! There's not an agenda against white people. Minecraft came out according to Google in 2009, when half the people who are currently playing it weren't fucking born. Finally, a baby girl. She's gonna fucking love Minecraft. I first played the beta when it came out in 2010, so I'm not really sure what this date is all about. But from the second I played it, I was completely hooked. And honestly, this game was just as good back in 2010. It just had... it. You know, it. Minecraft was inspired in part by a game called Dwarf Fortress, which is a, you know, Game? In Dwarf Fortress, amongst many things, you build a fortress by collecting and mining resources. You wouldn't know it though by looking at any of this. Its graphics lie somewhere in between non-existent and a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. However, it's easily one of the most engaging games I've ever played because your imagination is needed to fill in the gaps and the human race will never know anything more terrible than the darkness inside them. And the silken sad on sudden rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me. Filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. It's only a fucking curtain. Minecraft's visual style strikes this chord perfectly in that it's complex enough that you don't need a fucking degree in spatial perception to work out what is and isn't a tree. Give me your secrets. But simple enough that it still sparks your imagination. It's very easy to reimagine these rolling fields and jungles in your mind. Feel the frozen landscapes. Get excited by the small little mountain that lives. Combining this with the incredible Incredibly minimal soundtrack is what, to me at least, gives Minecraft its almost universal appeal and deliciously inviting tone. Saying all this, Minecraft was also inspired by a game called Infiniminer. Infiniminer. A game so similar to Minecraft, I'm surprised there hasn't been a fucking class action lawsuit filed. Minecraft? More like Zuckercraft. Mine. Bug. Every part of the environment in Minecraft is randomly generated and thus entirely unpredictable. This isn't Call of Duty, Modern Advance, Black Ops, Infinite Heroes, Ghost Mobile, Strike Team 4, where you're forced to watch every carefully choreographed cutscene with every inch of your attention in case you miss something vaguely impressive. I brought you here to change the world. What do you have in mind? Or you're just gonna shoot someone now. I'm pretty sure you're employed by this woman. Don't load your gun at her. Have some fucking manners. I was hoping you could tutor my son in maths. Where's he live? Because everything is randomly generated, the experiences you have in Minecraft are not only unique to you, but they haven't been planned by anyone, so your adventures feel all the more exciting and unpredictable. In my VR playthrough, for example, I spawned right next to a guarded tower and made it my immediate mission to kill all of the guards and see what was at the top. After days of planning, I made my move. I ran in and blocked the doorway with a bucket of lava so no one could chase me in. I made it. Only then did I notice the fires from the lava spreading. I turned and ran up the stairs, but it was too late. The fires had filled the tower and not even my screams could save me. What is wrong with this guy? Breath of the Wild is like Minecraft in that it's a similarly open-ended game where you can approach almost any situation or problem with a variety of freeform methods. Why have I done this? Breath of the Wild's biggest misstep though is once you've found a decent set of weapons and shields, you don't really need to rely on any method other than the more straightforward one, as the game suddenly gets a lot easier. Link, the blood moon rises once again. No one talks like that. I've lived in England for 30 years and I've never Link. heard a noise like it. Where Nintendo found this fucking woman is beyond me. That's why contrary to many stupid opinions, the weapon degradation system is great. You fucking cretins. <laughs> Minecraft is hard. After hours and hours of work, you'll eventually say to yourself, wow, I finally have enough arrows to defend myself. I can be outside now for as long as I want and build and- Oh fuck. Armour and weapons in this game degrade at the rate most people express contempt towards me. And as I explained, the slightest misstep can result in you losing all your worldly possessions, not unlike living in a capitalist society.
Bye. Achieving something in life is only satisfying if it requires a decent amount of effort. If producing a baby through natural means is the biggest achievement in your life, then for the love of God, man, reevaluate things. Learn Mandarin, aid in the development of cold fusion. All you did was fuck a few times, Christ. You see, the ratio of time spent to tangible results in this game is utterly sublime. An example of this being the difficulty of obtaining coal, iron, and diamonds versus their usefulness. It just works. The game does of course have some questionable time sinks. If you're planning on starting a cake factory for example, it may actually be easier just to start one in real life. Three buckets of milk, Jeremy. That's insane. This is gonna be one big cake. What I'm trying to say here is all the things that made Minecraft great, it already had in its beta in 2010. That's why it's always been such a big hit. It didn't need anything extra to be a great game. I don't know why I'm putting over there. And I'm not saying all the additions over the years are bad. Not at all, darling. I mean, when I think of aquatic life, my first thought too is a fucking squid. Seven years these were in the game before fish were eventually added. I can't get my head around this decision. Is this just what it's like in Sweden? Ah, the glorious plains of Sweden. But where are the fish? You can milk squid. Minecraft, what are you trying to do to me? Okay, it's been about... Six minutes? I should probably talk about Minecraft VR. Minecraft VR is, of course, an officially supported game, so... You okay? <laughs> we can go to the official site and install the changes we need to make Minecraft work in VR. Fivecraft. Fivecraft is an unofficial mod that lets you play Minecraft on most VR headsets without giving Facebook every piece of personal information about you from your home address to your favorite kind of cloud formation. So we run the installer. Oh, it looks like Microsoft's in on this one too. <laughs> and now that we've done that, it's installed and we can finally play Minecraft VR. It's beautiful! It's beautiful! I put aside three days to do absolutely nothing but play this game. And honestly, I had the fucking time of my life! I remember the morning of my second day as I stood in an open field. The sun rising above me and the sky turning orange. Monsters burst into flames around me. And I thought to myself, yeah. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Nine years out of ten could use more years, IGN. I got so into it, I genuinely got an Amazon Alexa so I could make notes for this video without having to take my headset off. Alexa, play back my Minecraft list. I couldn't find any enabled video skills that can do that. Go to the Alexa app to... <laughs> As you know, when you play Minecraft, you need a goal. I did it! Ah! As we said, mine was storming a guarded tower, and we all saw how that went. But this small goal was enough to completely immerse me in the game, and before I knew it, I was breeding cattle. This doesn't feel right. Growing a farm. This doesn't seem right. Or just travelling across the countryside, pillaging everything in sight like a good old-fashioned American colonialist. <gasps> I've discovered a community of natives. I must carefully and respectfully make first contact. Now I'll teach you for forming a peaceful and functioning society on land I only just discovered, you squidward-looking motherfuckers. <gasps> oh no, a church. They were far more advanced than I thought. I'll teach you for expressing faith in a god other than mine, you squidward-looking mother- Minecraft is a surprisingly immersive game, and unsurprisingly, Minecraft VR is even more immersive. Prize-winning journalism there. This is mainly because it's such a good VR port. Sure, moving up and down gentle slopes is about as pleasant as being forcefully hurtled through time and space. But this is a game about traversing and displacing one meter cubed- Cubes. It was hardly the most logical of experiences to port to one of the most advanced gaming technologies known to man. As a result, there are certain parts of Minecraft that mix as well with VR as a dinner party would. Being lost underground, for example, which happens as regularly in this game as fucking mining, becomes as nauseating as being alone in a room as it spins around you. You'll stand there, wandering around mazes of infinitely repeating textures and cubes, exploring the same identical 100 meters of caverns until you finally find a merciful pool of lava. Finally, sweet relief. Also, because VR inherently makes the visuals of games slightly fuzzier, picking items from Minecraft's menu Use becomes an absolute nightmare. You try and identify at first glance the differences between gravel, wool, cobblestone, clay, stone, andesite, basalt, and dorite at 720p or whatever the hell you would say this is running at. Basalt? Basalt? What is this? Back in my day, we just had stone. Alexa, name all the different types of stone. Granite, igneous rock, sedimentary rock, lava, metamorphic rock, magma, slate, nice, gravel. And this is a big problem, because static menus are the least appropriate way to select items within VR, and Minecraft manages to get through more menus than your mum. The thing is though, other than these... few... issues, porting Minecraft into VR does genuinely make most of it a lot more fun. Building and fighting is now far more engaging and precise, although my weapons do keep doing this. Changing weapons that are in your immediate inventory has been vastly improved. To eat you just shove food into your face, and the shields are absolutely fantastic. Once again showing that five people working for free can somehow totally obliterate the efforts of an entire fucking company. They've even managed to get the stars behind the clouds in this game, so we're quids in here, boys. <laughs> Basically, almost all of the gameplay in Minecraft VR is that bit more fun and accurate in VR, but 
best of all, you awake in an underground tunnel. Hey, you oh god, I'm here again! You awake in an underground tunnel. Darkness stretches infinitely in both directions. You listen and you hear the rattling of bones above you. Running water echoes in the distance. What would you like to do? Uh, go down? Okay. Oh, fuck. The point is, every time I'm underground in this game, I get this creeping sense of adventure. The warm lighting, minimal sound, limitless options, and simplistic visuals ooze personality and fantasy vibes. It always makes me imagine The Hobbit. Well, before. You know. <laughs> Why? Why did they have to do it? These worlds are places you want to build and explore in, and VR makes you all the more involved with these environments. The Nether is of course by far the most amazing place to experience in VR. The ground randomly bursting into flames, rivers of lava, scores of dead-eyed inhabitants roaming around like they don't even know what's going on. It's like being back in Florida. <laughs> Given this is my you know, job. I have a somewhat powerful computer. Although it is quite strange when I turn it on. The game also manages to stutter quite a lot when I'm moving around in the open. Who'd have thought a game with all the visual complexity of a Hogwarts Lego tower could cause so many performance issues? You see, when you play VR, you get a live overlay showing you how smoothly things are running. Here is how it looks when playing Half-Life Alex as a train is literally crashing around me like the world is coming to an end. And here is Minecraft when I'm walking through a blank field. Honestly, this can't be far off what they saw at the ending of Chernobyl. And don't get me started on the rain. Ah, what a beautiful day. OH MY GOD! The VR controls for this game also seem like they were mapped partially at fucking random. You see, the index controls have buttons here that you activate by slightly squeezing your hand. This action will make you change to your next held item. The trigger button here though at the base of the controller is mapped to attack, mine, or interact. Which, if it isn't obvious, covers everything. And do you know what happens when you press it? You squeeze your fucking hand. You'll stand there attacking, mining, or interacting, the holy trinity of shit you can do in Minecraft, only to slightly squeeze your fingers and change item, replacing your conveniently equipped pickaxe for whatever next in your inventory. A salmon, half a cake, a carrot, anything's fucking possible. <gasps> a creeper. How about you? Uh oh, this isn't good. Fortunately, other people have uploaded more sensible controller layouts that you can just select and use right away. Ah, a neon green haired dragon with horns and a seductive expression. Finally someone I can trust. And that's it really, Minecraft VR is basically just Minecraft in VR. Oh, tell me more old wise one. However, if you did want to make some big changes, you could add mods. <laughs> Also, the swimming is terrible. Have you ever looked up at the sun in Minecraft and thought, wow, if only though it was more realistic? Oh my god, we're all gonna die! Ray tracing is kind of like simulating light effects in software so that it behaves closer to real light. Like this. To play Minecraft with ray tracing, you will need an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 or better. Da -na -na -na. But if you aren't looking to spend your entire monetary value on another graphics card, I use mine as a coaster. It is sort of possible to do ray tracing in Minecraft without an RTX graphics card if you use this path tracing mod. There's loads of guides on how to set this up online, but I used this one. So here, so here we go. First be rich enough to get one of these slightly cheaper graphics cards. I also use mine as a doorstop. Then install Minecraft. Okay, well that's not too bad. Download Minecraft Forge. It must be one of these. Download Optifine. Uh, install. Realize you've downloaded the wrong version. Download and install Suspetagi. Now. <laughs> is actually the mod you need to change Minecraft's lighting. It was made by a single modder and to get it you need to donate $10 to their Patreon. The issue is though, nowhere on this guide is that mentioned until now. So as you can imagine, this made people slightly irritated. A $10 Patreon reward? Are you serious? Duh. How quickly we forget. This whole thread is cancer. This is a shill. Shut the Patreon down! How does he sell things that aren't him? Well, I think we'd all like to know the answer to that one. I don't think the paywall is what's upsetting everyone here, though. I think Game Crate committing you to the 12 fucking labors of Hercules before even mentioning it is the issue. So to use path tracing in Minecraft and be admitted to Mount Olympus, you must first. Strangle the Nemean Lion. Kill the Lernian Hydra. Catch the Aramanthian Boar alive. Hunt down the stag with brazen feet. Shoot the Stymphalian birds with your bow and arrows, tame the bull on the island of Crete, kill Diomedes, obtain the Amazonian belt, cleanse the Aegean stables in a day, kill Geryones, steal the golden apples from the Hesperides, and donate ten dollars to Sonic Ether's Patreon. Ten dollars? No, no, I'd rather remain mortal. Also, the thing is, once you've downloaded these shaders, you can cancel your Patreon subscription immediately and get them all for free. So, you know. Duh. Might have been a little bit of an overreaction. Then finally, once you have them, you're ready to start Minecraft VR with this super realistic lighting. And does it work? 
No, of course it doesn't. Are you fucking mad? You need the HAL 9000 just to run this mod at 30 FPS when you're not playing VR. You think you're gonna run it through a 3D projection helmet and have a swell time? Playing this in VR is like exploring Earth while God is trying to load the universe of a floppy disk. Just gotta let it buffer. I mean, it works fine if you literally don't move an inch. It is a shame it's unplayable because this mod really does look amazing out of VR. And speaking of which, oh yeah, I think it's time. Vivecraft is such an amazing mod, when you're playing it, it's easy to forget that the world isn't actually made of cubes. Isn't that right, Sid? Sid? <laughs> Who did this to you? It was me. I turned your cat into a cube. But why, Alexa? Sorry, I don't know that one. Well, do you know this? Oh god, it's happening again! <laughs> Maybe humans should play less VR. Okay, so I've had this great idea. Can you replace the monsters Hercules fights with cats? Yeah? Send them through. Oh god, what have I done? As always, I got a little bit spendy in this video. Fortunately, this video was sponsored by Honey. Honey is a free online shopping tool that finds promo codes online and automatically applies them to your cart, saving you, and me, money. You can get Honey for free on your computer in two easy clicks. Then if you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey will pop up and all you have to do is click apply coupons, wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons for that site, and if Honey finds a working code, you'll watch as the prices drop. For example, I get a lot of my clothes, including this hoodie, from ASOS. Remember this earlier? How could you forget? Originally, just the jacket would have cost me £72, but with Honey, I automatically had a coupon code applied and saved £10.80. <laughs> Amazing. Also, those of you who have already installed Honey using my link have found over $49,000 in savings. So if you have a computer, Honey really should be on it as it's free, works on any browser, and automatically saves you money. Get Honey for free today by going to joinhoney.com slash upisnotjump. That's joinhoney.com slash upisnotjump. That way they know I've sent you. <laughs> and thanks again to Honey for sponsoring today's video.